Hi there, my name is Jeremy Krug and I'd like to welcome you to my channel. A lot of AP Chemistry teachers are looking for a simple experiment to do as they get through Unit 1, which covers atomic structure and properties. Unit 1 can sometimes be rather abstract, uh, talking about periodic properties and the mole and counting atoms. So th this experiment lets them apply what they've learned and see how these concepts can actually be observed in the lab. In this experiment, students uh, get to determine the atomic radius of a metallic element experimentally. And all you need is a sample of a metallic element, preferably in a rectangular form. You'll also need an electronic milligram balance, and you'll also need something to determine the volume of the metal. If it's rectangularly shaped, you can use a ruler. If it's irregularly shaped, you'll need a graduated cylinder. This experiment has six steps and it goes very quickly. Uh, you can complete this lab in about 20 or 30 minutes from start to finish and even have a discussion at the end. If you find this video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I have a full AP Chemistry course right here on my channel. A full honors chemistry course is in the works. And if you're looking for a comprehensive review and practice program for your students as the AP exam gets closer, check out my materials over at ultimatereviewpacket.com. I've made everything for units one and two completely free, so you can try it out and see if you'd like to use it in your classroom. I've got a link down in the description below. Now, on with the lab. Step one is to take the metallic sample and determine the number of atoms it contains. So students take the sample and place it on an electronic balance, as you see here, and then uh, they can take the number of grams and convert it to moles using the metal's atomic mass, and then they convert moles to atoms using Avogadro's number. By the way, teachers have been asking me where I get my little electronic balances. I no longer spend hundreds of dollars buying analytical balances or digital balances through the major catalogs. Uh, for high school, they're just too expensive, so I've switched over to buying balances on Amazon. Uh, I can buy a milligram balance for about $15 to $20 US, and I've bought them on sale for as low as $6. Uh, these balances have a capacity of up to 50 grams, and they handle most of our applications in the AP Chemistry Laboratory. If you need to weigh something more than 50 grams, there are centigram balances on Amazon which usually cost less than $15 US. I'll put some links in the description below. Now back to the second step. You need to determine the total volume of the metallic sample. Now this is why I recommend using a rectangularly shaped block. So you can use a simple a metric ruler to measure length, uh, and width and height, and then multiply those by each other to get the total volume in cubic centimeters. If you have an irregularly shaped solid, you'll need to use a graduated cylinder with some water and determine volume using water displacement. Step three is to use your answers from the first two steps to determine the volume of one atom. All you have to do is take the total volume of the metallic sample from step two and divide it by the total number of atoms from step one. The quotient will be the total volume of one atom in cubic centimeters. Step four is to calculate the radius of each atom. Now we're going to make the assumption that each atom is a sphere and we'll calculate the radius using the equation for the volume of a sphere. Volume equals four pi r cubed over three. We plug in the volume of one atom that we got in step three. We use the value for pi, 3.14159, and we solve for r. So r is our radius of the atom in centimeters. Now, we don't usually talk about radius of an atom in centimeters, so we have a step 4b where we'll convert that radius to picometers. One times 10 to the 10th picometers equal one centimeter. When you multiply, you'll find the atomic radius in picometers. Step five is to look up the literature value for the metallic atomic radius of the element you're working with. 
for most of the common metals, that value will be somewhere between 100 and 200 picometers. Students can take that value and calculate a percent error. Now, most students, if they follow the instructions and do this correctly, should get a pretty good answer with a percent error somewhere less than 15% in my experience. Finally, step six is to perform an error analysis. Experimental error involves assumptions that we make in an experiment that might not be correct. For example, we assumed that the balance gave us the correct mass of the block. But did we calibrate that balance before we began? If not, we might be incorporating some error. If we used a graduated cylinder to determine the volume, how accurate and precise is that graduated cylinder for determining volume? Students can think of ways to reduce these sources of error. Now, another more important source of error is actually a very big assumption from step four. We're assuming that the entire volume of the block is composed of pure wall-to-wall -wall atoms. But you know that whenever you have a bunch of spheres in a container, that there's some space in between those spheres. And in our calculations, we did not account for that space, the interstitial space between the metallic atoms. So that throws off our answer as well. In fact, I like to share this with my students because when you calculate the atomic radius using this method, pretty much every student gets an answer that is about five to 15% too high. Almost no one ever gets an answer that's too low. And this is because the volume of an atom that we calculate in step three is actually a little bit greater than the actual volume of an atom because we're not subtracting out the interstitial spaces between the atoms. So this is a pretty neat little lab that teaches several concepts. If you'd like a PDF copy of the lab worksheet, there's a link in the description down below so you can print it off and try it out in your classroom. And I'd love to know how it went. Uh, please feel free to leave a comment and let me know. Thanks for watching. I hope this lab is useful for you and I wish all of you the best in AP Chemistry this year. I'll see you soon.